Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, somebody's uh, channel was taken offline. I don't know all the details, but uh, he was kind enough to post some of my work on his channel. Had some good stuff from other people. And... Uh, it was Rev 11.4, and I'm not sure if it was the hosting company. I suspect it was the hosting company, but it could have possibly been WordPress, but uh, they dumped the channel. Honestly, Father must be protecting my channel. I just don't see any other way. So, uh, in the link... And on the community page. And people, you should look at the community page. I got probably 90-something percent of all my work online available for a download. It's, uh, uh, what do they call it, a compressed file? Well, a zip file. Because it's getting to the point where uh, they're just not going to let you teach Jesus anymore period that's just the way it's getting to be so uh you know it's it's getting to be real it really is I've seen so many channels that have been disappeared and uh, Somebody wants me to start a channel. Well, I have a channel on World Truth Video, but they want me to do more like the new stuff. But uh, I don't know if they're getting denial of service attacks. That's where like, they'll have thousands and thousands of computers trying to access the site at the same time just to keep other people away from it because it uses up all the capacity. And uh, then you got Gab. I don't know. I think Gab's got, uh, is it World Truth or Gab? I forget which one's which. But uh, I think it's World Truth. They got so much Nazi stuff, which I don't want anything to do with the Nazis. Hitler was just another politician. Uh, an evil politician. And like I told you in previous things, um, I knew people that had lived through World War II. Matter of fact, they were in their late 20s or early 30s uh, during World War II. They were from Denmark, Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. When Germany invaded Denmark and took it over and occupied it. And uh, let's see, you're talking about in the 60s and early 70s. And of course, I was a probably, a, I was a teen then. But uh, they told me it was a it was brutal. At the end of World War II, they applied to come to the United States and were accepted. And they says, you know what? Two world wars with Germany, we want out of Europe. So they came here. And they told me that the Nazi occupation of Denmark was brutal. And I don't want to hear anybody tell me about, oh, well, they were... Uh, Jays. No, they're they were not Jays. These people were my best friends. They were very kind and generous. And I love them as I love my own parents. They were great people. Some of the nicest people I ever met in my life. And I witnessed to them, but they just weren't interested. So sadly I don't think I'll be seeing them in an eternity unless I go to hell. But uh, very nice people. But uh, the Nazis were not nice. I, I don't care what they said. What they said and what they did was two different things. So, And Rommel, who was not a Nazi, by the way, uh, was complaining that uh, Adolf was... Uh, his stupid plans interfered with everything that... Uh, Rommel would do. And that's why he kept losing all the battles. So, you know, 
a corporal in the army is telling a general what to do. This Rama was a, a genius, just like Patton. And they got rid of Patton too. I heard his neck wasn't broken until he went to the hospital. And something you don't hear about, there was a, at the end of World War II, there was a Polish pilot. Yeah, Polish. Yeah, I bet you he spoke uh, Yid and you know the ish part. Yeah. And uh, he machine gunned his, uh, in a plane, his uh, staff car. And I guess they ran out, he ran out of bullets. But uh, this was after the war was ended. Here it is a, uh, I think it was a, I think it was a British, in a British plane, machine gunning an American vehicle after the war had ended. I mean, you know, they tried to kill him before the, you know, before the, uh, the accident. But you don't hear about that because guess who owns the media? Oh, yeah. So let's get going here. Ezekiel 44. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel series. People go to my community page and download my stuff. Because there's going to come a day it's gone. And when it is, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll try to keep online for as long as the Lord wants me to. But All right, Ezekiel 44, verse 1. Then he, the Lord, brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened. And no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord... The God of Israel hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is interpreted, but I don't know. First thing that popped in my mind was the virgin birth. And there's people who say, oh, well, that's not important. Yes, it is. The virgin birth is a very important doctrine because... If Mary's DNA was used and, and all the DNA was corrupted from the beginning of Adam and Eve's fall, then that would mean Christ, his, he was not a sinless, spotless lamb to be sacrificed. But that's my guess. And I don't know if there's two gates or if there's four gates here. But uh, if there's two gates, well, then the one gate that he came in on is the gate of holiness, I guess you could say. But then the second gate would be where people can go in and out. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, verse 2. Then said the Lord unto me, the gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened. And no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore, it shall be shut. Let's take a look at John chapter 10, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am. Boy, Jesus used that I am a lot. He said, I am the door of the sheep. Now, remember, when Moses was in the desert with the burning bush, uh, the Lord says, well, I'm going to send you to the uh, children of Israel, and you're going to, you know, take them out of Egypt. And Moses is like, uh, well, when they ask me your name, the name of, you know, what are you going to tell, you know, what should I tell them? Tell them I am hath sent you, or, or you know, I am. Because Egypt had a, a bunch of different names for different gods. They had a crocodile god for the Nile, uh, a god for the sun, a god for the weather. Uh, you know, they had all kinds of different uh, 
Horus, Osiris, Isis, the goddess, um, the, the, all kinds. So they're going to, you know, Moses is like, well, what am I going to tell them? I am. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Eternal life, right? I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Let's read Ezekiel 44, verse 2 again. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. You know, going in and out of that same door, right? Verse 4. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house, and every going forth of the sanctuary. And what is sanctuary? It's finding protection. Verse 6. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. Now, verse 7, if you ask me, this is a direct, well, it happened in the past, but also in the future, when the second temple came under Ezra and Nehemiah, when they left Babylon, the, um, they rebuilt the temple. And then, guess who came along? The Romans came along, well, about 30 or so years before Christ was born. And they took Herod, who, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian that had respect for Christ, I suspect he might have been a Christian, but uh, he said that Herod was of Esau, Edom, Idumea, and Herod spent time building the temple, well, or expanding it or whatever he did making it a magnificent place. You know, they build these churches not to honor the Lord. They build these places to control the people. You know, like Billy Goat Graham. And, you know, when I hear people tell me, oh, yeah, Calvary Chapel, what a wonderful place. I was like, 
I just roll my eyes and say, you know what? May the God of Calvary Chapel bless you. But I know the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is not at Calvary Chapel. And, you know, they took, they took the Edomites. You can read about it, the Maccabeans. They told the Edomites, the Esau, Idumeans, that if they got circumcised and adopted Judaism, that they could be one with Israel. Well, what do you think Herod did? King Herod, the Edomite. He brought in all those, you know, the priests. Caiaphas. You know, the ones that uh, had Jesus killed? Oh, yeah. That crowd. I mean, Josephus said that Herod was an Edomite. And in a previous study, several previous studies, God tells you the end and the doom of the Edomites. They intermarried with the Hittites, which were a Canaanite tribe. And they were fallen angel, satanic human hybrids. But you can't get anybody in the churches to teach that today. Uh-uh. Oh, no, Jesus wants to save everybody. He loves everybody. I don't think so. Verse 7. Well, 6. Let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it. Even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. Does that sound like uh, God's pleased? No. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary or any stranger that is among the children of Israel. People, the only Israelites that were allowed to do the sacrifices was the tribe of Levi. I think, I think it was King Saul yeah, it was King Saul, a Begemite. He got tired of waiting for the Levites to show up, so he did a sacrifice. Well, guess what God did? He let the Philistines kill him. You don't cross God's boundaries. You just, you don't do it. Verse 10, And the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray, which went astray from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, who the Levites, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house, they shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into, into iniquity, therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. 14. But I will make them keepers 
of the charge of the house, for all the service thereof, and for all that shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. See, the Lord had a, a remnant that were faithful Levites, the sons of Zadok. Verse 16. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. No wool, linen, cotton. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causeth sweat. So, you know, wool's for cold weather people, not for uh, warm, right? A uh, little something I learned when I was in Colorado. You know, Colorado has some winters. They have a saying in the winter, cotton kills. Because when you sweat with cotton or it gets wet, it doesn't keep you warm. I mean, it's almost like being naked. But wool, when wool gets wet, it still retains a great deal of its warmth. So cotton kills. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Verse 19. And when they go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered and lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. So, you know, they got holy clothing. I guess they don't want to defile it with those people, right? Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. So they don't want them to have long hair, and they don't want them to be bald. They shall only pull their heads. Uh, I think that's like a, a haircut. I don't know. Just to keep the hair a certain length. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Uh, this is starting to sound like uh, the book of Leviticus here. Verse 22. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. You, know, you can't have a divorced woman. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had a priest before. And they shall teach my people the difference, the difference between the holy and profane. Boy, they don't, we don't have, we don't have people today that teach the difference between holy and profane, do we? Hardly any. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all mine assemblies, and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall come at no dead person to defile themselves, but for father or for mother or for son or for daughter, for brother or for sister, that hath had no husband, they may defile themselves. I'm not sure, but I think this is talking about 
uh, touching the dead to bury them. I think that's what this is talking about. So they can only do this for uh, relatives. Uh, and for uh, for our for a sister that had no husband, they may defile themselves by touching something dead, right? And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. In the day that he goeth into the sanctuary unto the inner court to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, saith the Lord God. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance and inheritance. I am their inheritance. Now, just in case you don't know it, people, there were 12 tribes. Levi was only one of 12. And the tribe of Levi was not given any land. They were not given any portion in the, uh, the land of Israel. Why? Because the Lord was their inheritance. That was what the tithe was for. The tithe was to support the tribe of Levi, a tenth of the increase, so that they could feed themselves and have things to sacrifice unto the Lord. That's what the tithe was for. So when you hear a lying New Testament preacher talking about tithing, guess what? Unless he can prove to you that he's a a, a, a priest of the tribe of Levi, he's not entitled to the tithe. He's not entitled to it. It doesn't belong to him. He's the one robbing God, not you. Think about it. In the New Testament, it's called an offering. Our high priest is Jesus. Our tithe is to be to Christ. So, I don't know. Verse 28, and it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance. The Lord is the inheritance of the tribe of Levi. And ye shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering and every dedicated thing. And every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs and the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all of every sort of your oblations uh an oblation is like a gift a uh, type of sacrifice it's an offering and the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all of every sort of your oblations shall be the priests Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. And uh, dough is talking about bread there, not uh, money. That's an American saying. Verse 31, The priests shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself or torn, whether it be fowl or beast. Uh, so if anything dies of old age or gets torn apart by a lion or a dog or whatever, uh, is not fit for food for the priest. So, all right, well, that's the end of Ezekiel 44. May the Lord allow this channel to keep going for as long as he wills. I'd like to finish up this uh, Ezekiel series, so... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.